Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I just read Gene Fodder by Guy Haley, and it's good in many aspects. However, there are also some peculiar things that you should know before you read it. Gene Fodder is a direct continuation from the great work, as we once more follow Call, Cuvo, and Alpha Primus on Call's quest to harness the power of the Necrons. For those out of the loop, Call is trying to use Necron pylon technology to reduce or even close the Great Rift. In this novel, Call is trying to gather allies for an even more ambitious project that involves time travel, Necron shrines, and a Mars load of heresy. Things get even more complicated, however, as Fabius Bile wants to borrow the materials that Call used to make the Primaris Marines. Of course, one can't turn down Bile easily, so expect them to get into a bit of a hustle over this. Will Call manage to gather enough allies for his quest? And will he manage to keep his stuff away from the grabbing surgeon of Bile? You will have to read the book yourself to find that out. The first thing I want to mention is that this book directly continues a plotline from the short story To Speak As One, also by Guy Haley. Therefore I highly recommend reading this short beforehand, otherwise you will probably be wondering what the hell happened between this novel and the great work. Fortunately for you, the short story is pretty nice, but it's weird that you have to buy a separate short story to be able to follow this plot. The best thing about this novel is obviously Call himself. Similar to the great work, Call is an arrogant, borderline heretic, genius with a special degree in comedy gold. He routinely gets himself into all kinds of trouble with his shenanigans, but he will just dismiss it all because surely nothing could stop his genius. He would be hard pressed to find anyone in this galaxy more full of himself, but generally speaking, he actually manages to back up his claims. Every scene with Call in it is a joy to read and he really is the star of this novel. Sadly, the same cannot be said for Fabius Bile, because this book does something very peculiar. Josh Reynolds has written one of the most beloved trilogies in the Black Library about Fabius Bile, a trilogy which really fleshed him out as a character and which turned him from a cartoon villain into a big fan favorite. This book, however, completely ignores this trilogy. Bile is no longer bound to Slanesh, he no longer has a band of apothecaries, Zagara no longer exists, he is no longer a demigod, the Vesalias and Wolver never were a thing, Bile never managed to bend Raidbone to his will. It's very weird that all of the cool stuff Bile did just gets retconned, while Call gets to do much more setting breaking stuff all the time. It also feels really dumb to retcon one of the coolest book series out of 40k in favor of making Bile a side character in this novel. Sure, Haley did maintain the personality of Bile, but only on a superficial level. The real depth and intrigue we saw in his trilogy are absent, and his character development also seems to have evaporated. The scenes with Bile and Call together were pretty good nonetheless, and I think their debate in the middle of the book is probably my favorite part of this entire novel. Haley did also make Bile pretty smart, so he is actually a worthwhile opponent to Call, rather than just a beat stick. But altogether, it is just very disappointing that there is first of all very little of Fabius in this novel, and secondly that Bile's entire story is seemingly just thrown out of the window. I was hoping for a legendary showdown, and instead it is just a book about Call that also happens to feature Fabius Bile. Another highlight of this book is the Mechanicus world building. Similar to the way the Fabius Bile trilogy always did a great job at creating interesting apothecaries and flesh constructs, this book does a great job at coming up with interesting and unique tech priests and machines. From a Magos that is nothing more than a box of tentacles with a brain, to a half-snake power glaive wielding Medusa. All sorts of wacky things make an appearance and I loved every bit of it. Not to say that the non-Mechanicus world building was lesser though. The book takes place on a weird dark age of technology fake planet. There is a weird Admag dungeon similar to those found uh, beneath Mars. We get to see an angry, stubborn Necron playing chess. There are interesting discussions of Mechanicus' fate, and Alpha Primus remains intriguing as ever. The final thing then I think you should know about this book is that it doesn't really have an ending. This book is very clearly the first book in what will probably be a trilogy. It ends on four separate cliffhangers and doesn't really resolve anything. In fact, I would argue that the ending only raises more questions than you had at the beginning of the book. So keep that in mind before you buy it. Now altogether, I will still give this book 4 to 5 tentacle cubes. I really dislike how this book retcons the Fabius trilogy, but fortunately Bile does remain a force to be reckoned with. It is also weird that the book only provides cliffhangers and no answers, but hopefully a sequel will resolve that issue. And outside of these issues, 
This is a very entertaining novel with a lot of mechanica themed humor and world building. Carl and his gang were fun to read about in the great work, and in this book they too are an absolute joy to see on paper. So altogether it is definitely a must read for Mechanicus fans, but we will have to wait on the sequel to see how big the implications on the overall setting are going to be. Anyways, that is all I got for you today. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing or joining us on Patreon. Otherwise, have a nice evening and don't forget your nightly prayers to Nagash.